Robert Sala has come out and clarified his keeping receipts comments. Plus, Rex Ryan defended Robert Sala in a recent interview on CBS Sports Radio. We have all the comments. I'll give you my thoughts. Let's talk about it in today's Jake Asman show. Let's hit it and get it started. My name is Jake Asman. Week two, Jets at the Browns. Can New York rock Cleveland at the dog pound? You're writing the story of your own life. Never allow another man to hold a pen. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button down below. Super chat, baby. Cut the line. Can these Jets shot the football world? Now, let's talk about the New York Jets. This is the Jake Asman Show. Here we go on a Thursday. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. We got some Jets news to dive into as we're another day closer to the Cleveland Browns matchup on Sunday. It will, in fact, be Joe Flacco, as we talked about yesterday. Check out the interview we did with Robbie Sabo from Jets X Factor. If you want more game-specific content, we'll have more videos for you leading up to the matchup on Sunday and then a live post game show about 30 minutes following the game. Come join us. That first post game against the Ravens got fun. We took calls by fun. It got spicy, got angry, got heated. That's what we are as jet fans. I look forward to doing those after every game. Make sure you check out the channel about 30 minutes following the jets and the Browns on Sunday. With that being said, let's first hear from Rex Ryan. You guys know by now what Robert Salas said about keeping receipts. So Rex Ryan doing a media tour yesterday was a guest on CBS sports radio on the DA show. And this was Damon Amendolara asking the former jet head coach, his reaction to what Robert Salas said about keeping receipts. I is our guest this morning on the show as a former Jets head coach I want to play for you a clip from Robert Sala current Jets head coach and get your take on this we're all taking receipts on all the people who continually mock and and say that we ain't going to do anything I'm taking receipts and I'm going to be more than happy to share them with all of y'all when it's all said and done does it make sense to pick a fight with the critics like Robert Sala is doing you know what this I, I gotta say this about Robert Sala you know I had some differences with him earlier and and but when I talk to this guy, he's got a help, he's got a plan for this football team, and you you start to see how they're building his team, and it, it this is a thing where it just didn't go the way he thought, man. He I get I guarantee in his mind he thought he was going to win that game, and he went into it with that, and he's got that that mindset. He knows what's down the road. This team is going to be a really good football team down the road, and I think he's saying it out there. Yeah, he's frustrated with with this and and those same old jet comments man just bother the hell out of you and i think it just he's like all right i'll tell you what you know so i think it's kind of cool that he stepped up and said oh no just wait because we're going to turn this thing and and i i believe it too i believe in him i believe in the direction of this team i believe in joe douglas it's going to get done and i think it's going to get done sooner than later so you know, it's tough, man. you got a backup quarterback, obviously an aging quarterback that's not the player he once was. But what's Sala going to do? Is he going to say that? He can't say that. You know, uh, so, you know, wait till this young guy gets in. I think this season's about progressing this football team and developing this young quarterback. I think Rex said that beautifully. Here's the thing I would I would tell Rex, and Rex knows this. He lived it as the Jet head coach. You put a target on your back when you say stuff like that. This could go one of two ways, as I said. I don't hate what Robert Sala said. I would just like to point out here that this could go one of two ways. It could be like Herm Edwards saying you play to win the game. It's a legendary press conference. The Jets, after starting 2-5, and five, won the AFC East in 2002. They haven't done it since. That's a legendary moment because of what it led to. Or this could go the other way where this backfires and every jet loss, if they get embarrassed on Sunday against Cleveland, people are going to be making receipt comments. Jet fans are going to show up to the next home game with a bunch of CVS receipts and, and, and mock Robert Sala. So I don't dislike what Robert Sala says, but as I said earlier this week, you got to now back it up. I'm not surprised Rex is going to defend Sala. They clearly hit it off after, you know, whatever Rex's issues were with Sala a year ago, they spoke and now Rex is the biggest solid cheerleader so take that information and do whatever you want with it but his point about look he's not going to trash joe flacco he's right but mike white can't play on sunday that's all i'm going to say like i understand it's a backup quarterback but 
You have Mike White sitting there, so Flacco better go out there and play better because that's directly a decision made by this head coach. But I, I pretty much agree with everything you know Rex Ryan said there, but I just know how this fan base is. It, it's going to go one of two ways. This could rally the team, and maybe this is a turning point like you play to win the game was back in 02, or this is something that could backfire. Hell, even Rex, when he came to the Jets and became the head coach and says he wasn't going to kiss Belichick's rings, you know what Rex Ryan did? He backed it up. His first game against Belichick in week two in 09, the Jets won the game. And then Rex then gave a game ball to the Jet fans. And Fireman Ed accepted it on behalf of the Jet fan, as we all remember back during that 09 season. So you got to back up the talk now. We understand that this team was not expected to win the Super Bowl. We understand that most rational Jet fans were not expecting the playoffs. We expected fourth quarter competitiveness, and they didn't do that in week one. What's the excuse going to be if they can't do it against the Browns and Jacoby Brissett? What's the excuse? Defense played well enough against Baltimore to do it uh, in the fourth quarter, and they couldn't do it because the offense was inept. Mike LaFleur basically saying today they're going to change a lot of things. They have an, they have an idea of what went wrong. Oh, offensive line's got to play better. Joe's got to play better. I understand all that. Show us. Show us. That's the biggest thing. Robert Sala, I don't hate that he said what he said, but you got to show us because until you show us, it is same old Jets for most Jeff fans. That's just how it goes. Now, Robert Sala did yesterday follow up on the receipt comments, and I thought this was a much better answer. So I'm sure he thought about it. It was an emotional moment. I'm not going to kill Robert Sala for his comments here. They will be used against him if the team stinks, but if the team stinks, he's not going to be here that long anyway. I, this, I thought, was a much better answer um, from Robert Sala yesterday. I think everyone in the locker room, including the coaching staff, knows how we all feel about one another and how much confidence we have in one another. And um, my words, my display of emotion, which I, I do my best to control up here, is that it, I've got conviction over it. And, um, you know, this is not the same old Jets. But until we win, until we prove it, which is on us as coaches and on us as players, the, the shots will keep on coming. And so we welcome them, keep bringing them. It's not going to change our mission, and that's to bring this organization and this fan base a winner. So no problem with that. I think it's a good job to acknowledge, you know, we got to win. You know, don't don't tell us you're going to win. Show us. So, I look, to me, it's a big story because it's the Jets. And this is the pros and cons of the New York market in a nutshell. If another coach said this in a different media market, I don't think it's getting as much play. But it's the Jets. And they haven't won. They have the longest playoff drought in the NFL. They have the worst record in football since 2016. So show us, Robert Sala. I believe in this talent level. Like, the, the Jets, to me, should easily – find a way to win seven or eight games this year easily. That's not an unfair expectation for a team that has had the worst record in football since 2016. Now as a second-year coach, a fourth-year general manager, a second-year quarterback. So they got to win some games here. Robert Sala, you can't tell us how great everything is if you go 4-13 and again. Fans look at the record, and right now is the Jet head coach, Robert Sala, is 4-14. and That's what people are looking at. Fair or unfair, that's how they're judged. And I'll, I'll say this again. The last four coaches in New York did not make it to a year three. Gase with the Jets, McAdoo, Shermer, and Judge with the Giants. It's hard, man. New Yorkers, we don't have patience. And you know what? Why should we? The Jets fan, the Jet fan in particular, they've been bad enough. So go out there on Sunday and beat the Cleveland Browns, a Browns team that was okay against. Uh, the Carolina Panthers, I rewatched that game, and I, I didn't watch that game and think the Jets have no chance. I know it's the Browns' home opener, but so what? The Browns haven't started 2-0 since, like, 1993. All right? Same old Jets. How about same old Browns? Can we get that on Sunday? Like, I'm not going to sit here and say the Jets, you know, they're definitely going to win, but what's the reason why they can't? I understand Flacco is not great, but if they could protect him, if Lakin Tomlinson could play like we know he's capable of, George Fan could play like we know he's capable of, they should have a chance, man. Stack the box, and let's see if Jacoby Brissett can beat you. I don't think he could beat you throwing at Sauce Gardner or DJ Reed. I really don't. I think the Jets' corners are so improved that if you stack the box and really put pressure on Brissett, he's going to have a tough time making plays. And I think the Jets' defense finally has the personnel to be able to do something like that. So it's going to come down to the offense. Can Joe Flacco not suck? Can this offensive line not suck? Can the Jets not beat themselves with dumb penalties? Or dumb turnovers. You know, Conklin can't slip. That leads to an interception. Or fumble. Or I guess it was Lawrence Cager. Or Conklin can't, you know, catch a ball, fumble, and then you lose the first down. You got to settle for three. You miss the kick. Like, 
The bare minimum should be you're in the game in the fourth quarter, but they really got to win this game. I'm tired of losing games in September. It's enough. It's enough. Win this game. You come back to MetLife in week three, one-on-one against a Bengals team you beat last year. The whole outlook on the season starts to change. One win will energize this fan base. No one's going to be saying Super Bowl. They beat the Browns on Sunday, but the morale in this fan base is incredibly low after just one game. They got to win on Sunday. I don't care how they do it. Figure it out. Find a way. That has to be the number one goal for this team. Figure it out. Find a way to win. No excuses. We don't want to hear it. Don't tell us about the receipts. Don't tell us things are going to turn. Don't tell us that, you know, the the process we have is so great here. Show us, Robert Sala. That's what we want to see on Sunday. Win a game in September for the first time since 2018. That's it. With that being said, we'll open it up now. Some of your comments and questions. You, If you have a super chat, those always go first. Those pop up on my screen, and we'll bring them up. Any question related to the Jets or the NFL is fair game. I do want to say this. I saw Jamal Adams is, uh, is unfortunately out for the year. Listen, you guys, if you watch the show a long time, you know my thoughts on that trade. It's one of the great trades ever pulled off in NFL history by Joe Douglas. But I have no ill will towards Jamal Adams like wishing him injury. So I, I'm sorry to see that. Jamal's going to miss the year. I mean, regardless if he even played this year, it's still one of the best trades ever. But obviously him going down only makes that deal look better for the Jets. But from a human standpoint, I I wish Jamal Adams the best in his recovery as he's out for the entire season. All right, with that being said, we'll take some of your comments and questions here. Real quick, though, let's talk sports betting. we got a big game tonight on Thursday Night Football, Amazon Prime. And if you want to bet on it, use BUSR, busr busr.com slash Asman. Scan that QR code. And it will take you to my homepage. You can make your account. If you're a new user, you'll get a free play up to $1,000. So bet on the game tonight. Uh, If I'm leaning with a pick, am I crazy for taking the Chargers getting four? I think the Chiefs win, but these these are like the two best teams in that division, I feel like. Uh, I think it could be really, really close down the stretch. I might want the points. That being said, the stats with Mahomes and Andy Reid in, in September are just insane. So I don't really know where I'm going with this one, but I'll be betting on it. I'll make a pick by game time. BUSR.com slash Asman if you want to bet on that. Yankees have the day off after they swept the last place losers, that is the Boston Red Sox last night. Uh, Mets in action today. Can the Mets win a game against a lousy team swept by the Cubs? You can bet on the Mets tonight against the Pirates with Carrasco on the mound. So whatever sport you want to wager on, use BUSR. Check it out. BUSR.com slash Asman. Asman. All right. Comments, questions, anything on your mind? Before we do that, real quick, I want to note that coming up on Sunday is the last day that we will have the promo code for the Kicks by Carly shoes. So if you're interested in purchasing these jet shoes, go to kicksbycarly.com. And if you use my promo code Asman, you'll get 10% off. It runs through this Sunday against the Browns. So Order these shoes now. They're so cool. So many compliments when I wore them the other day. Check it out. Kicksbycarly.com. Use promo code ASMIN if you want 10% off. All right, here we go. Comments, questions, anything Jet-related that is on your mind. Let's see. This one is from Tianto. He says, I'm 34 years old and been watching this team for years. We better win Sunday. Look, I think that's how most Jet fans feel, Tianto. There's no reason why they can't win on Sunday. All right, I know the Browns won in week one, but it's not like they dominated the Panthers. You go back and watch that game. It was pretty ugly for Carolina for a lot of it, and they still had a chance to win. Jacoby Brissett should not beat you. I'm sorry. Stack the box. Stop their run. Like the Jets were able to stop Lamar Jackson and company in week one, and you should have a chance in this one. I mean, that's how I'm looking at it. Harlan says, folks, don't forget to hit the like button. If you're in doubt, hit it. Thank you, Harlan. Appreciate that. Thanks to everyone who watches. Scherzi says, hi, Jake. First time live from Australia. Awesome. Shout out to all our international viewers, including Scherzi, who's in Australia. Rhett says, season starts when Zach gets back. Judging the Jets with Flacco isn't fair. They should be able to be in the game, though, even without Zach. I- I'm not going to accept that. I understand Flacco's a backup, but so is Brissett. All right? Jacoby Brissett's a backup quarterback, too, who you're playing. All right, this is not Lamar Jackson on Sunday. So let's keep that in mind. All right? And then if Zach, you know, doesn't play against Pittsburgh, it's either Mitch Trubisky or Kenny Pickett, backup-level type quarterbacks or a rookie. So I, I, I just can't sit here and, 
and, and be like, oh, well, Flacco's playing. Nothing else matters. That's that's not fair. You know, the Geno Smith-led Seahawks won a game on Monday night. Daniel Jones and the Giants won a game on the road at Tennessee. All right? Like, the Jets have no reason to not be competitive, even with Joe Flacco. Comments, questions, anything on your mind? Steven says, it takes more than two games to show you. It ain't going to be good till halfway through the year. All about next year. You don't like it, then too bad. It should not be all about next year, though, Steven. The team's got to win some games. If they don't win any games, they're in trouble. Robert Sala's in trouble. He's not surviving a four-win season. No way. No way. So, yeah, it's going to take more than two games to show us, of course, but... Is it that unfair to ask the Jets to win a game in September against a, a team starting a backup quarterback next week? Michael says, Tomlinson, ABT, they need to figure it out. Flacco is running for his life. He is. He is. Part of that, I think, is Joe just needs to get the ball out quicker. But Tomlinson and ABT absolutely need to have much better games. ABT, I don't think, was that bad if you really watch the film back. It was more Fant than Tomlinson that had bad games. You look at, like, pressure rates and all that. Shadow says, gas, no breaks, positive vibes, receipt collector, play the game already. We just want to see this team win, man. That's all it is, Robert Sala. Joe wants to know, do I think Zach Wilson has a shot to come back week three? I don't rule it out. The fact that he's already on the field and it's been five weeks since the injury. I mean, seriously. Like, I, I, it really does feel like they just put Pittsburgh as the timeline so Sala wouldn't be asked questions, but it wouldn't shock me if Zach plays next week. I'm not banking on it, but I wouldn't be shocked. I wouldn't be stunned. I mean, he did seven on sevens today at practice, according to Mike LaFleur. Adam says 0% chance Salah is fired. What if they go 4-13, and 13, Adam? You could still be saying that? With Woody Johnson back in charge and empty seats in December? I don't know about that one. Kareem says you want offense, feed Brees, and put Mims in. I agree with part one, feed Brees. And how about instead of put Mims in, how about feed Garrett Wilson more? He's got to be on the field a lot more. That guy's unbelievable. Franco says, too many loser mentalities. Come on, guys. We need to believe and hope we can win games. Yeah, look, the reality is this fan base is in, like, show us mode. I, I can't blame them, Franco. It's one game, but it was ugly. It looked like the same old Jets on offense. They scored nine points. Six of them came in garbage time. And, of course, they couldn't even hit the extra point after they finally did score a touchdown. So, I don't blame the Jet fan. Show us something on Sunday. That's what we want to see. Win this game. When did the, the Cleveland Browns become an unwinnable opponent? They're the Cleveland Browns. John says, what are fans going to say when Zach Wilson comes back and stinks? Well, how do we know he comes back and stinks, John? What if he comes back and plays really well? Then what do fans say? Maz says, Jake, I think you're putting unnecessary pressure on the Jets and the head coach. Riling up the Jet fans is not a good idea. How am I doing anything? Maz, how am I putting any pressure on Robert Sala? He put pressure on himself by saying, we're keeping all the receipts. Oh, yeah? Well, then show us. We want to see wins. If, if that's putting pressure on Robert Sala and that's a bad idea, then we got the wrong head coach. If if, if my voice on this show could influence the, the Jet head coach, then he needs to go today because that's just silly. That's just silly. Trice says, the way our D looks, anything north of 21 points should be enough to get the job done. Question is, can Flacco get us north of 21 points? I mean, I would hope, Trice. Can they hit some field goals, though? Because that's probably what it's going to take. Mad Money's got it right here. Unleash Garrett Wilson and Brees Hall. Amen. Amen to that. L. Git says, too many negative vibes here. Jet W on Sunday. I mean, that's the plan, right? Luis says, Garrett Wilson's way too good to not be targeted more. Agreed. Carmine says, can't stand the people that say fire this guy or this guy sucks. Yap, yap, those fans are the worst. You should blame them. It's a freaking whole new team and a ton of new players. Agreed, Carmine. You're not hearing me saying fire anyone after one game. What I am telling you is that the Jets go out there and they win four games this year after they only won four last year. They struggle in the AFC East again. Robert Sala is not the head coach next year. He's not. 
He's not surviving a four and 13 season. So he deserves more than one game and he has his backup quarterback. But I think we all could sit here and say, well, the Browns have their backup quarterback and the Jets haven't won a game in September. So show us something. Sweaty KFC says two and 15 keeps Salah for one more year. Uh, that will not happen. Maz says, 0% chance the Jets win against the Browns. You're pushing a false narrative that the Jets should win this game. Maz, you're a clown, dude. Zero. You know, I'll put. I'll leave your comment up so other people can see how stupid this is. 0% chance the Jets beat the Browns. When did the Browns become the 07 Patriots? The Cleveland Browns have not started 2-0 since the 90s. Or even the Jets have done the 2-0 thing before in our lifetimes. Give me a break. I'm putting too much pressure on the Jets. I'm pushing a false narrative that they should have a chance to win this game on Sunday. Get out of here, dude. Rich Samini and Brian Costello on the beat both picked the Jets to win this week. Get out of here. I'm putting, I'm pushing a false narrative. What, that they can't beat a Browns team with a backup quarterback? That's going to have Brownie the Elf at midfield? Come on. Richard says, where's the morale level going to be if they get blown out on Sunday? I mean, as low as it's ever been. They get blown out against Jacoby Brissett. That is... As pathetic as anything else. Robert says, as a lifelong Jets fan, always expect the worst, then you're never disappointed. I mean, that's how a lot of people look at it. Michael says, love Salah's passion, haven't had a coach willing to challenge this team since Rex. It could go one of two ways, Michael. It could work and rally the team, or if they continue to stink and he proves he's not the right guy, there's going to be Jet fans showing up to MetLife with CBS receipts to troll the coach. Elliot says, I'm nervous about Miles Garrett going up against Max Mitchell. I think you should be, Elliot, but that's not an excuse for the Jets to have no chance in this game. But yeah, I mean, limiting Miles Garrett is a huge matchup in this one. Manny says, Hey, Jake, good afternoon. As far as Sal is concerned, if the Jets don't beat the Browns, then our next home game will have a fan. Yeah, with big paper receipts. Exactly what I was saying, Guzman. Yep. Luis says, would you take a flyer on black and ship? I mean, I would. Clearly, they're going to give, though, Greg Zerlein more than just one game of being bad. But if he's bad again this week, he cannot kick in week three. That'd be embarrassing. I mean, I don't even want Braden May to kick in week two. They brought in uh, the Chargers punter from last year. I think the guy's name is Ty Long. No idea if he's going to be punting on Sunday, though. At least they brought someone in. Can they bring in a kicker, too? Joe says, Brissett wasn't looking great against the Panthers. If our defense could play like they did last week, I believe the Jets will get the win. It is not crazy for the Jets to win on Sunday, despite what one person says, that the Jets have no chance on Sunday, which doesn't seem to make any sense to me. Rhett says, on a real note, that elf at midfield is kind of cool. I wish the Jets had a midfield logo. We've talked about this before, Rhett. Uh, the Jets should have a midfield logo. It stinks they don't. They're the Jets. Like, how cool would, a, would an awesome plane be, a jet at midfield? They don't do it. It would make MetLife feel a little more like a jet stadium for once instead of just a bland, giant AC unit. Harlan says, Salah could survive the season even if he only wins four games. We have a young team, and they play inconsistent. Every team that uses a West Coast-type offense lost last week. Harlan, I just disagree. If he goes 4-13 and in New York after he was 4-13 and last year, What's the justification for giving him another year? Didn't we all say the talent level was so improved this year and they only won four games? Sorry, he's gone. I would not want him here if they go, if they, if they go four and 13. He's got to go. Eduardo says, we need to win games this season. I can't take a three and 14 season. So now they're going to be worse than they were last year. Marquise says, we got a good team. It's just one game. Show us. That's what Robert Sala is saying. Show us. Neil says, Jake firing Sala after a 4-13 and year. What's that going to do? You realize it takes three years to build a mess like the Jets. They're not a mess right now, Neil. There's talent on this team. If they can't win more than four games with the offensive talent they added and the defensive talent they added after they won four last year, why are we sitting here and saying that the Jets were such a mess? They're not a mess right now. They're a functioning team that should be able to win games. That's what we're saying. I don't think they're going 4-13. and 13. 
I have the Jets at seven and ten this year. I still, after one game, I didn't expect them to beat the Ravens. I'll say they're still going seven and ten, but got to show us because that was ugly in Week One offensively. You scored nine points, six of them when the game was over. That's what we're saying here, Neil. Don't tell me about the draft pick and how that's better long term. Wins are better. Wins are better. You need to find out if Zach Wilson can play, if he could be your quarterback. If he wins games while doing that, that's a good thing. Jerry says, pin our ears back and make Brissett uncomfortable with our pass rush. We have the corners to cover man-to-man. They do. That they do. Reekin Devil checks in with a super chat. He's up next. Thank you, Reekin. Great to catch you live, Jake. I want a competitive Jets football and some wins. This is not an unreasonable request. Make it happen this week. Yeah, I'm with you, Reekin. I'm with you. Kyle's up next with a super chat. There's no way Flacco's better than White. They think so. They think so. I mean, I don't. I would play Mike White this week. If Flacco stinks in the first quarter, I'm pulling the plug. I'm not even giving him to halftime. I'm not watching another game like what we saw against the Ravens. That was just a joke. Ryan says, is Amari Cooper playing? It seems like he is. Yesterday, he got a veteran rest day. I would expect to see sauce on Amari Cooper a lot. Or maybe DJ Reed. It's a good problem to have. Load the box, trust your corners to make plays, and stop Jacoby Brissett. Hennessy says, the O-line needs to bring it this week. Biggest X-factor besides Flacco. Agreed, Hennessy. The O-line has to play a lot better. And they got to run the ball. Stick to the run. They got away from the run last week, and they were running the ball, I think, at six yards a carry. Professor Pigeon says, defense is playing so much better now. It's one game, but they got to carry that over now in a week, too. It was a very impressive first week defensive performance against an MVP-level quarterback. Brian says, the Browns are aggressive pass rushers. We can counter with screens. I agree. Can we see some more of that from LaFleur as a play caller? The Browns are bringing it. Get the ball out quick and neutralize that pass rush. Joe says, 8-26 and 26 head coaching record gets you fired in 2022. No question about that. I agree. I agree, Joe. If they go 8, if Sal is 8-26 and 26 through two years, he's not here next year. Neil says, Jake, do you see that the O-line's hurt? I, I mean, that's not an excuse to fold your team and win four games, Neil. Not injuries happen. The Ravens were down to their third string left tackle on Sunday. You people just want to make excuses and just accept losing. I'm not even holding the Jets to a high standard. They have the longest playoff drought in the NFL. And I'm saying just win games this year. Be competitive in the fourth quarter and win at least seven games. It's unreal. The Just the, the low standards here. VR says the X factor is field position. Field position could be a big one. Now, also not having 20-yard shank punts. Uh, I'd recommend that as a pretty big one, too. Sarah wants to know, when does Zach Wilson return? They say week four. Now, he's doing seven-on-sevens already at practice. I don't think it's crazy he plays next week. I think the Jets were being overprotective with him by just saying, oh, you know, week four. If you look at the timeline of the injury, they said two to four weeks originally. It's been well over that now. It's been well over that. So I'm not going to be shocked if he plays against Cincinnati. But I still would lean with Pittsburgh. They're going to be extra cautious. Douglas says, Jake, they have potential talent, but it's raw and unproven. Next season is the ultimatum so long as each game is competitive. I mean, Douglas, you're not wrong, but if they go 4-13, and 13, he's gone. I, I don't understand why this is so hard for Jeff fans to grasp. If they're not competitive and, they're, and they have a four-win season again after they had the offseason they just had, how do you justify bringing the head coach back? Explain that to me. Frank says, truly missing Zach Wilson's mobility. If they have Zach Wilson on Sunday, they might beat the Ravens. Because Flacco's such a statue. Landon says, I'll be at the game this week. Start making your bets as to which quarter I go streaking on the field. Can't be more embarrassing than watching another blowout. 
You could probably end up in jail for that, Landon. So I don't know if you want to do that, but enjoy the game. I hope they win for you. Richard says, one major positive from week one was no major injuries in a big injury week in the NFL. Yeah, look, if you want to call that a positive, sure. Uh, it's a little relief as well. I mean, the Jets have just been so unlucky with injuries the last couple of years. It's almost surprising they got through a game without anything catastrophic. We'll see. It does seem like Jordan Whitehead might actually play now. Didn't practice yesterday, but he practiced today. Uh, it's a pretty good sign. I, I figured he was not going to play Sunday after what Robert Sala said yesterday. So who knows? Stifler's mom with a super chat. Can we just commit to the run game until Wilson's back? Control the clock. Keep our defense fresh. Not Sala's fault that our guys are injured. I agree with that, Stifler's mom. But you're going to need your quarterback to still make plays. And hopefully Flacco could do a lot better job at it. But yes, they should run the ball. They should be a lot better. I completely agree with your assessment there. Run the ball. Use Brees. Use Michael Carter. O-line plays better. Keep keep the uh, the Browns defense uneasy with a mixture of some screens and whatnot. And it's all good stuff. That's what we want to see. With that being said, that's going to end today's show. I appreciate all of you for watching. If you're a new subscriber or new viewer, I should say, please hit that subscribe button on the right-hand side of your screen. We post daily Jets videos on this channel. Make sure you like the video on your way out. We'll have more videos to, uh, for you throughout the week. Thanks again to everyone who took time to watch. Hold on. We got a super chat at the buzzer from Manton. Good thing I saw this. Thank God. Thank you, Manton. Jake, do you know anyone going to Cleveland for this week's game? I'm going with a few friends. Uh, I actually don't know that many people going, Manton, but my advice to you would be check out some of like the Jet fan groups and see if there's one in Cleveland and if there's anything planned for like a Jets-Browns tailgate because we did that when the Jets came to Houston last year to take on the Texans. So check that out. I'm sure there will be some Jet fans there, and you can find a group. All right, with that being said, now we're actually going to end the show. Thanks to Manton for the last minute super chat. Thanks again to everyone who watched. If you're going to the game like Manton, enjoy, and we'll have more Jet content for you throughout the week. Have a good one, everybody.